Welcome back to Brutal Mode EX, the mod that makes Plants vs Zombies much more difficult. In this series, we attempt to beat the hardest levels in PvZ history, and you are currently watching part 8 of the series. In the last video, one level took more than 7 hours to beat, and I strongly recommend you watch the previous parts first, as most things are changed from the original game in Brutal Mode EX. Today, we are continuing on the minigames, and the first one today is Walnut Bowling. It now has twice the zombies with an extra flag with the addition of football and ladder zombies to the level. To compensate for the much higher density of zombies, you now get extra bowls for hitting 3 or more zombies with a single walnut. You get these yeti heads which are walnuts but can't give extra yeti heads. A weird quirk though is pole vaulters don't jump over yeti heads, so they're slightly better I guess. The reward for hitting multiple zombies increases the more you hit. For example, hitting a 4th zombie with a single walnut gives back 2 yeti heads and hitting a 5th gives an explodo nut. With zombie variants in play, you must be aware of the gravehead zombies because you can't plant new walnuts on top of gravestones. I lost multiple times thanks to these guys blocking up all the spots I can place my walnuts in, so it's best to kill them before they can cross the red line. Other than that, you have to play really well in maximizing the zombies hit per bowl. I find it best to bowl in the top and bottom rows because it gives more predictability for which direction the walnut would travel in. Beating the level is extremely challenging, and even this took over 1 hour to beat, and it's all about getting the chain of hitting zombies between 2 rows to maximize the damage dealt with a single bowl. The losses are boring to say the least, but it's a result of poor planning such as killing the zombies too quick, causing waves to spawn quicker. For the final wave, since there are a crap ton of gravestones spawned throughout the level by gravehead zombies, the final wave is a massive horde of zombies which you'll probably need most lawnmowers alive to beat. Alternatively, a single bowl will hit a huge amount of zombies, netting you a bunch of yeti heads so you won't lose either way. And that's one of bowling complete, but that's just the start of this video and there are more absurd minigames coming. The next minigame is Slot Machine. The twist is instead of getting attacking plants like pea shooters, you only get instant kills and defensive wall plants. And also, instead of bucketed zombies, they have been replaced with pole vaulters, newspaper zombies, and gargantuars. The end goal is still the same. Get 2000 sun and you win. The level is really RNG dependent. Even if you have lots of doom shrooms, you need to get the coffee bean at the right time to activate the doom shroom or else you're just planting a bunch of sleeping mushrooms on the board. Thankfully, the level is not that bad at all and it's relatively easy to just hit the right plants to kill off the zombies appropriately, albeit rather challenging to try to beat this level without a lot more. If anything is going to cause trouble, it'll be the torch lay zombies, again, because they move much faster and we need to get an insta kill fast for the slots to kill them. Fortunately, the Gargantros are not that bad at all since they do not come until later when you are probably at the point where you are almost going to win, so that's slot machine. The next minigame is It's Raining Seas. If you are wondering how bad this level was, um, just look at this combination of zombies. Bruh. If we're talking about unfair levels, this level scales as one of the least fair levels that exist in Brutamode EX, probably worse than Zambani 1. You have absolutely no control with what plants you get during the level due to how the level was inherently designed, and you can't possibly survive the level if you get too many trash plants like power pots and puff shrooms. As you saw, in the first attempt we literally lost the lawnmower against the first wave of zombies while having used the doom shroom already. That gives you an idea of how bad this is. If you want to see the horde luck you need to beat this level, on our second attempt, we got absolutely decimated once again. We had to rely on just instant kills for the first few waves, it doesn't help that we got a bunch of useless sea shrooms in the water, and then proceed to get blasted down by a gallon piece screen door. Absolutely fun! The game gives you a lot of lily pads this level. By a lot, it seems like a third of the plants you get are lily pads, leaving you with an extremely small amount of defenses to be placed on the ground against the dangerous torch lanes and newspaper zombies that come early on. Most of your firepower will need to be focused on the ground lanes where the most dangerous zombies are, such as green doors or football zombies, leaving most lily pads empty. As you can see, right here is the problem. The absurd amount of lily pads you get makes it unbearable to defend in the early game, and this is another run over. You should tell me how this was a massive skill issue, and I could have defended much better with what I got. A massive problem is the screen door zombie. The umbrella leaf variant is extremely difficult to deal with since most plants cannot damage it unless at close range. You can't get enough catapults to defend them off most of the time, like right here. Another problem with screen door zombies is the squash bucket at variant. Normally, they aren't a huge problem since you can just puff through more flower pot to tank the squash at almost no cost. In this level, you don't have a choice to do that, so most of the time you have to let it hit your frontmost plant. The best answer is different magnet room, but it doesn't help the fact it prioritizes to pull its bucket head before its screen door, so it still ends up squashing something. Now for the dumbest inclusion in this level, obviously that's Jack in the Box zombies. That means there are ghost Jack in the Box zombies in this level, and if you can't get a planter, then GG is well played, you lose the game, skill issue in my opinion. 
Now combine all of that with torchlight zombies and footballers, we've got a level of almost impossible difficulty in our hands. There aren't even umbrella leaves in this level even though there are bungee zombies, so they can easily infiltrate our defenses and fire down unprotected plants like Mario Golds. I tried the level a lot of times and couldn't beat it, so I'll be skipping over the level for now. The level is possible though, as some people have actually beaten the level, but you need some insane luck to win. This guy on YouTube almost lost to a squash screener zombie, but got a Doomshroom Sun last second. Talk about get getting bailed out. Thankfully, the next minigame, Bagul, is probably the easiest minigame on the page. It has received pretty much no changes from the original, except for the fact you lose 10 matches if you make a mismatch, to prevent the spam matching strategy. It's not that hard to spot any matches anyways, so the level is pretty much easy and you can beat it by playing it just a bit more carefully than usual in less than 3 minutes, and this level is over. Easy. Next up, we have Invisigool. If you thought Torchlight Zombies couldn't get worse, introducing to you we have Invisible Torchlights. Zombies that run through your entire defense without you even being able to see them coming, an absolutely balanced concept in its own right. What's worse is pea shooters are our only attacking plant. We have no long-term defenses that we can plant, so all we can rely on is spamming the instant-use plants and hoping for the best. Squash has also been taken out of the level, and instead we now get Tall Nuts, which are squashes upon death, so it's fine I guess? What's not fine though is Walnuts. As we all know it, they are useless in Brutal Mode EX thanks to Torchlight Zombies. I kind of gave up on this level too, so we'll be coming back to it at some point in the future. Seeing Stars' objective is still the same, but with more difficult zombies in place such as Pole Vaulters and Football Zombies. Even Gargantors are here. You may think this level would be much harder since Starfruits cost 200 sun now instead of 125, but that's not really the case, thanks to how massively buffed their projectiles are. Their pierced projectile allows them to completely invalidate the increased zombie density, making them scale well even late into the level. Starfruits are so strong in masses that not even Gargantor stand for long. They are just straight up dead before they can even reach the Starfruits. The only thing that could possibly kill you is the Cherry Bomb Gargantuar, which would throw a Jack in the Box zombie and destroy your Starfruits. Thankfully, they are much less common than the regular Doomship Gargantuars, so this level shouldn't be that challenging to beat. Especially since you can use your cattails to pile on extra damage against high health zombies. However, in case the Cherry Bomb Gargantuar does come, use Jalapeno on top of it to instantly kill it, since Jalapeno is still double damage to zombies on the tile it is placed on, courtesy of the vertical attack overlapping the horizontal attack. With the Cherry Bomb Gargantuar out of the way, now there's no way we can lose, and that's the last star fruit to beat Stinging Stars on the first try. As for Zombie Quarium, Right, even Zombie Quarium can be made hard in Brutal Mode EX. Unfortunately, Brutal Mode EX's Zombie Quarium is the same as regular Brutal Mode Zombie Quarium, where the twist is snorkel zombies almost instantly die right when they get hungry, so the strategy to beat it is just to spam your first two brains as fast as possible to feed your starting snorkel zombies, then buy new snorkel zombies when possible, and also to feed them as fast as possible to keep them alive. It takes many attempts to do this, getting kind of ridiculous at this point if you're asking me. Eventually though, once you can do it, you then just gather all the snorkel zombies in one spot and keep spamming brains, then add more snorkel zombies over time and slowly but surely, you will beat the level. Beguiled Twist is almost the same as normal Beguiled, but you only lose one match for every mismatch. Yes, it's because spotting a match is much more difficult in Beguiled Twist, but anyways, if you thought this level was easy, unfortunately there is one zombie that makes it not. Yep, you instantly lose the game if an angry dancing zombie comes, because who doesn't love having them in a level where you can't use instant kills to kill it? It's like a race to finish the level before an angry dancing zombie comes and ruins your run, so it is of utmost importance to master spotting matches and big yield twist fast. There's also another problem with the level. As you know, while the zombies trample plants when their screen door is destroyed, but the beguiled mechanics don't register the plant as being destroyed, so we can still perform a twist on a plant that does not exist. And when you do that, the game crashes. Way to go. The angry dancing zombie actually makes this level extremely difficult to beat, with an actual challenge to beat beguiled twists as quickly as possible as now you cannot just slowly spot matches and win. Even the walnut screen or zombies pose a big challenge for us, as they can keep trampling our, our plants easily with their extremely high health. 
It took about an hour to beat the cute twist and master the art of spotting twist matches. There were a lot of failed attempts against even Torchlight Zombies as one of the reasons for us to lose while we were at 73 out of 75 matches. Really unfortunate that I had to try over again that way. Eventually, we were finally able to beat it and at that, let's move on to Little Zombie Big Trouble. Now we have Little Zombie Big Trouble. As you can see, this level is clearly completely fair and balanced, featuring our only attacking plan again, the Pea Shooter. Among the addition of Pea Shooter zombies, we also have Catapults and Gargantors. Catapults can't target Pea Shooters like Zombot and EPs, so they're not the biggest issue here. The biggest issue is definitely where Gargantors don't die in one shot to Cherry Bombs, unlike the regular Brutal Mode equivalent of the minigame, thanks to the Cherry Bomb damage nerf. That creates lots of problems for us, since we need even more Cherry Bombs than before to spam and beat the Horde of Zombies. And if you thought their intros are bad, Snorkel Zombies are worse. They spawn ambushes constantly and we don't really have much for them again, except, again, Cherry Bombs. These shooters are pretty much for show for the second half of the level considering the amount of health these zombies have, but will be useful in the early game, especially if you hit the Hyro RNG and get a melon shot from them, dealing a huge amount of splash damage. Unfortunately, I was also not able to beat the minigame due to the massives of zombies and inability to simply get less walnuts in exchange for more cherry bombs. I now had a choice to make. Since I was stuck on free levels, it's raining seeds, invisible, and also little zombie big trouble, I have to beat one of these free levels to move on. All three of these were absolute hell levels to beat since they were all conveyor belt slash RNG-esque levels with absolutely no control of what plants we can get throughout the level. I eventually stuck with trying to beat its raining scenes, this was the only level I had seen anyone else on the internet truly beat on Brood and Brood EX, so I tried for hours on end to beat the level. After two months of streams, we finally had our winning attempt. Obviously, there isn't much about skill to be said, but it's rather about how lucky you need to get to win. The key is getting as many free beaters as you can get. Nothing is more important than the board-wide slowdown free beaters offer. Honestly, there might be a good contender as one of the best plants in the game just because its effect is incredibly dominant against Torchlight Zombies. Other key plants you need to get are like magnet shrooms. You need one or two of them placed in the water lane so you can remove the buckethead off the squash queen or variants since that will allow you to kill them before they squash one of your plants. Choppers are also very good. Since they can one-shot any squash queen or zombie while stalling zombies out and pushing them out of our free pewter lanes to keep them safe. You also need lots of defensive wall plants to ensure your choppers, mountain shrooms, and free pewters don't completely die to the gatling key, screen door variant. But yeah, the skill isn't really for plants 
recognizing the points in this minigame. Rather, it is about recognizing the best points for this minigame to reduce the time wasted on dead runs when the game gives you garbage like cabbage poles and lily pads. With that, we can move on to other minigames in the next video. Oh, or not. Oh, and the Doomshire comes in. And the NLL. No lawnmowers lost. GG's well played. That will be it for today's episode of Brumo DX. Sorry it was released with such delay since I'm currently on vacation and got into a car accident of sorts, but it's all good now. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. You're most likely not subscribed if you're watching this video according to YouTube, so what are you doing? Don't miss out on more videos like this. For now, thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.